hey, hello, hi, and how are you? Welcome to the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm the guy on the right. I'm Rick. To the left of me is Big Show. How you doing, man? Pretty good. So, um... I'm the right wing. I'm the right hand. You're the left hand. <laughs> that that works out perfectly because I'm actually naturally left-handed, so... And I'm actually right-handed. See? Look at that. Two, two peas in a pod. There you go. Look at that. You got the old Amateur shirt on there. Yeah, that... Shout out to uh one Kevin Manning today, celebrating the big four six. He 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 has the big forty six. He 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 made the comment on his knee was talking to him. I told him wait till you get to fifty. Both knee and knees are gonna be talking. Yeah, they do. Yeah, in unison. Mm hmm. But yeah, happy birthday to you, Kev. By the time you see yes, this, sir. it'll be you know three days late. But we didn't already just waking up from your after party, <laughs> right? <laughs> Hangover complete. Yeah. Um still still trying to eat off the kids' menu. I know. That that's why he sent that <laughs> one text to us. He exactly. found it ain't working no more. <laughs> All right, guys. If you watch this show frequently, listen to it frequently on your podcast feed, you know that today is a TCT. If you are not someone who frequents the show, let me let you know. TCT stands for True Crime Thursday. And uh, on those True Crime Thursdays, we uh, bring you guys a lot of great content. And the TCTs, we talk about uh, crimes, unsolved mysteries. Sometimes we even go outside of the box and we talk about the supernatural. Um, and I know what you guys are thinking next. Well, you guys come out with a video every Thursday. That's true. But TCTs are always the third Thursday of the month. Show today, I'm, I'm going to talk about not old, old golden years Hollywood, but old school Hollywood. Uh, Natalie Wood. Um, mm -hmm. She, uh, She's one of those people that you will see in a bunch of things, but you don't really recognize in a bunch of things. She had a good career. She was one of the few child stars that became a teen star that became an a, adult star, not adult films. People get out of the gutter <laughs> and adult in films. A anyway, we're, we're talking about her. Um, we'll, we'll call it unfortunate accidental death. And when we put the pieces together, I'm going to ask you, show, if you think there was any foul play, if you think this was natural, um, just just to pick your brain. And uh, then I've got a little tidbit about a TV miniseries that was based on that. Uh, Interesting. Anyway, Natalie, uh, she was an American actress. She was born Natalie. Uh, I hope I don't butcher this. Zach and Zach and Co. or Zach Heron Co. I can't pronounce it. Um, Z a c h a r e n k o uh, on July twentieth, nineteen thirty eight. But she died in November of nineteen eighty one. She was only forty three years old. Uh, she was, like I said, one of the few actors that made that transition from child star to a star as an adult in films. Uh, people that are still trying to scratch their head and wondering. Where have I seen her? If you've ever seen Rebel Without a Cause, she was in that movie. Uh, John Ford's The Searchers. Um, what's another one? West Side Story. She was in that. If you guys don't know any of yes. those, but you frequent the Christmas movies every year, she was in, uh, what was that Christmas movie? Um, Miracle on 34th Street. She was a child then. So she would have been the child. Yeah, she was a little girl in that one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, here's the deal. Um, and it was about 44 years ago. She drowned off the coast of Catalina Island. Uh, now, authorities classified her death as an accident, concluding that the 43-year-old star of West Side Story, who couldn't swim, 
had been drinking the night before and she was found floating face down in the ocean waters. Um, I'm just going to backtrack a little bit, show. She happened to be on the boat with her uh, husband at the time, Robert Wagner. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He'll be part of that tidbit that I have coming up. And his good buddy, a one Christopher Walken, who everybody knows. Um, who at the time, mm -hmm. her and he and Christopher Walken were making a movie together. Yes. yes. At that time frame. Yes. And I believe Robert and Christopher had been arguing. And Natalie wanted to get away from that mess. And um, there's quite a few stories about what happened that particular evening. But yes, that is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Robert went up, said that he couldn't find her. And I believe the dinghy was missing. Um, the dinghy was untied. Yes. Yes. Um, here's the thing. There were different stories, different iterations. In 2011, uh, 30 years after her death, the uh, Los Angeles County Sheriff's officials reopened the investigation because, you know, somebody who has more technology today than they did, you know, yesteryear was like, hmm, something ain't right. And uh, they changed the, co the coroner's report from the cause of death originally, which was accidental drowning to drowning and other undetermined factors. Um, that's kind of like uh, when somebody's guilty as hell, but they don't want to admit it, so they plead no contest. So what the coroner basically said was, she drowned, but I'm not saying that she drowned. Wink, wink. I mean, she drowned, but we can't say that she was murdered. Right. Basically. Can't um, say if it was... A purposeful drowning or an accidental drowning? Now, you guys are probably wondering what led to that. The coroner's new report cited fresh bruises on the actress's arms and knee, along with a scratch on her neck and a scrape on her forehead, as evidence that she might have been assaulted before she was drowned. Now, I want to pause right there. Mm -hmm. When did you say that they changed it from accidental to undetermined? 2011. 30 years after, right? Yes. But they found fresh bruises and cuts. Well, they were 30 years at, later. They were looking at the report. Uh, they didn't, they didn't exhume the body. So right. pictures so had they're been look, taken. So they're but, looking at a picture that it appears it was, it was, they were newer. Yeah. 30 I'm, year old. I'm, I'm going to say that the previous coroner either missed it blind or didn't report it. Um, Again, more shady business. I mean, there's a lot of things that make you scratch your head with this case, for yeah. sure. Now, the new report also noted the conflicting statements about when Wood disappeared and whether she had argued with her husband, uh, again, Robert Wagner, along with Walken. And um, they were on a 60-foot yacht. So keep in mind, you got 60 feet to play with. You don't just fall off. I mean, yeah, you can be sloppy drunk and, and make that fall, but if you are in your right enough mind to argue with somebody, chances are you're still aware of where you are. Could be wrong. Never been that drunk. So, you know, you guys can chime in if I'm wrong about that. Hours before death, authorities said the three actors had dinner at Doug's Harbor Reef, a restaurant uh, in Two Harbors. And then they returned to the yacht, uh, which is called the Splendor, where they drank and an argument ensued between Walken and Wagner. According to the new report, Wood went missing about midnight and an analysis of her stomach contents placed her death around that time. The report said Wagner placed a radio call to report her missing at 1.30 in the morning. Now, Roger Smith, the uh, L.A. County rescue boat captain who helped uh, pull Wood's body from the water said he didn't receive a call to look for her until after 5 a.m. Okay, there's there's some conflict right there. The original investigators thought Wood's body was bruised when she fell off the yacht 
and struggled to pull herself from the water into the rubber dinghy whose side bore scratch marks that seemed uh, consistent with that theory. But in 2013, a coroner's report investigate, uh, excuse me, the report coroner's investigations noted that nail clippings were not taken from Wood's body to determine whether she had made the scratch marks and the dinghy was no longer available to be examined. How convenient. The coroner thought Wood died soon after entering the water. Detectives said that 100 people contacted authorities after the investigation was reopened, but it became clear that the new probe didn't provide a big enough break in the case, and some detectives claimed that Wagner knew more than he let on about Wood's death, um, which I'm, I'm going to get into. Now, no charges were ever filed. And the department said that it's not sure whether a crime occurred. Um, you know, this was shades of OJ before OJ, but we'll get to that. Our, our biggest challenge at the time, which came from Lieutenant John uh, Karina of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department was, um, and he was part of the homicide unit. In 2018, he said, many witnesses have passed away who were on boats nearby. The original investigator passed away. We're reaching out one more time to see if people will come forward with information. Um, so they were near the harbor if other boats were uh, in the area. And speaking of Lieutenant John Karina, he also died in 2019. So there are very, very few people who are still around who knew what went down. Uh, two of those people that are still around, Robert Wagner and Christopher Walken. They are the closest to uh, who, who would know for sure what happened. Real quick, before we get back into this, I do want to take a second and uh, tell everybody, hey, thank you for watching. If you're on YouTube, thank you for listening. If you're on any of our great podcast feeds and uh, don't forget to make us your favorite. Don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss any of this stuff. We always got good content coming. And um, hit us up anytime. It doesn't even have to be when you're watching. You can catch us on the Slightly Warped podcast at yahoo.com. I answer mail 24-7 on there. And uh, I might even get you on a uh, future episode answering your questions. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Slightly Warped podcast at yahoo.com. That sounds like a mouthful. But the more you say it, it'll just roll off your tongue. All right. We'd love to hear from you back to the case. And uh, also just to add to that before you do it, if you guys have any cases that you would like us to discuss, we would like to know that as well. Yes. Yes. Remember true crime Thursdays, third Thursday of every month. And last I checked every month, even February has three Thursdays. All right. Um, what are you thinking so far about this? Do you think that there was some foul play? I don't know. I mean, really, there's not a whole lot of evidence to go either way. If you held my feet to the fire and I had to give you an answer, um, I would I would probably be leaning towards the accidental death theory. Just because the majority of the stories that have been told have been fairly the same. There have been a few differences. Um, however, people close to Natalie said that Wagner, uh, was a tyrant to Natalie in their first marriage because at the time yes. of her death, that was their second marriage together because yes, they were she, married she way back him, in the day. She got married to somebody else. Then she divorced and got back with Robert. That's correct. She was, she was dating James Dean for a while. And then he was remarried. But then I guess she had told her friend or her sister that, you know, I trust the devil that I know versus the devil that I don't know is why she got remarried to Wagner. Mm. Um, you know, her main issue was she was always afraid of water. And she had a fear that her death would be in dark water. She had, she had actually said that in an interview. 
um, lo and behold, she did die in dark water because um, yeah. it was at it was at night. Sometimes I think people speak those things into existence, you know. Yeah. Um, I think that if there was foul play, that with all the time that has passed, and as many people as looked at it, there would be some sort of evidence on that boat if she was beaten or killed. You you can't clean that type of stuff up. Now, granted, we're going back in the well. This is eighties. They still had decent forensics in the 80s you know so it's not like it was 1940 and you know there was nothing they could do you know so i would i would tend to think that if there if it was an actual uh purposeful death that that they would have found some sort of evidence and i don't think christopher walken would have kept a secret this long if he wasn't a part of it you know what i mean right I, so I mean, honestly, board, you know, um, I, I, I mean, I according to both Wagner and and Walken, when Walken and Wagner were having the fight, she wasn't even there. She'd already went back to her room, mm -hmm. supposedly. Now, my issues with Wagner are when she was missing, the captain of the boat was like, "We need to call somebody." He's like, "No, let's wait," and sat down, and they started drinking scotch. You know, so that's it took X amount of hours before they even threw out a distress call. It's a little shady on his part. Right. You know, maybe he was trying to give the current time to pull the body away, you know, type of thing. But but the facts were she was wearing a coat. She was in her nightgown and a coat. She went outside, obviously. They think that the dinghy was banging against the boat and she went up to move it, slipped and fell off. And obviously she couldn't swim. Both Walken and Wagner said that Natalie wasn't even in the room when they were fighting. Yeah. And and that they thought the theory was that the that the dinghy was banging up against the boat, which was next to her stateroom, and it was annoying her. So she went up to either move the dinghy, retie it to a different cleat or whatever, and then she slipped, fell into the water. She couldn't swim. She was in a coat, which is, you know, a heavier coat, and she had a nightgown on because it was cool. If that is the case and two people are arguing on the boat, you're not going to hear somebody screaming for help because you got two grown men yelling at each other. Yeah. So, you know, it's plausible that it was a uh, an accident. But like I said, only Natalie and God really know what happened. And unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever get an answer. No, unfortunately, I don't think we will either. Um, Unless now, Wagner or Walken, you know, Mac, you know, miraculously decide to say the opposite, and you know, on his deathbed, yes, I killed her, or whatever, you right. know. Now, authorities recovered her body at eight a.m. on November twenty-five, twenty-nine. Excuse me. Uh, it was about a mile away from the boat, with a small uh, Valiant brand inflatable dinghy beached nearby uh, Wagner said that she was not with him when he went to bed the autopsy report revealed that she had bruises on her body and arms as well as abrasions on her left cheek but no indication as to how or when the injuries occurred um, I'll get to that in a second uh, Davern had previously stated that Wood and Wagner argued that evening uh, with Wagner which Wagner denied at the time in his memoir, and Dabner's he, the captain of the boat. Yes, Dabner was the captain of that boat. Mm -hmm. uh, in his memoir, "Pieces of My Heart," Wagner admitted that he had an argument with Wood before she disappeared. The autopsy found Wood's blood alcohol content was 0.14, and that there were traces of motion sickness pills and painkillers in her bloodstream, both of which increased the effects of alcohol. And um, so Wood had been drinking uh, prior to when she slipped uh, nearby the dinghy. Her sister, Lana, expressed doubts, alleging that Wood could not swim and had been horrified of the water all her life and that she would never have left the yacht on her own uh, by the dinghy. The two witnesses who were on a nearby boat stated that they had heard a woman scream for help during the night. 
Mm. Okay, so show. I'm kind of uh, in line with you on that because of the pills, the alcohol, um, the just the whole intoxication factor. I, I, I I'm leaning more towards an accident and less towards foul play. Um, and you know the I, the I do feel that Walken and Wagner, especially Wagner, held back more than they should have for whatever reasons they had. But I don't believe that uh, they are to cause for her death. I agree. Um, you know, those bruises, the one on her cheek, the, that could be from the fall. That could be from being in the water, bumping up against the boat. I mean, it could be, you know, we don't, they never said how deep the water was or whatever. I mean, it could be she could have scraped her knees against the coral under the sea. I mean, there's a lot of explanations for, for, for that. I agree. Yeah. And, and, because of that we're back to unknown we'll never know um you guys have got my thoughts on it you guys have got big show's thoughts on it do you agree with us do you disagree i want to hear from you so back to that email address hit us up at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com or if you're on whatever feed your youtube or your podcast feed They've got a comment section in there, too. You can hit us up. I check them all and uh, make sure whatever you're on, you subscribe. That way you don't miss any episodes because uh, we've always got something good coming. All this entertainment and we don't even charge you for it. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just kidding. That's right. We don't. <laughs> Show. Um, as we're winding down, I do want to touch on this because we opened this can of worms a couple weeks ago. So now we have to follow through for a full eight weeks. It's called the Acolyte. And tonight slash tomorrow, depending on when you view it. And uh, by the time you guys watch this or listen to this, it will have already happened. Episode five will be upon us. So we're already at the halfway point. So we want to talk about episode four right now. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I'm letting you know right now. Hit pause. Go to Disney Plus and watch it because we're about to spoil it for you. Your thoughts on episode uh, four? Trash with a capital T. The series is slowly going down like the Titanic for me. Mm. I'm almost putting it in the same category as the She-Hulk. Mm. Um, you know what, though? Here's my thought. I, I'm almost in line with you on that, but She-Hulk started off with promise. So did this. I was, I, I was, I was on board, but questions came up from the very beginning. So I didn't have those questions with the first couple episodes of She-Hulk. I may have been wondering, hey, where's this going? Because I thought it was going somewhere, only to be let down in the, in the end. This one. I almost felt let down from the third episode. Um, the fourth episode. A, go ahead. I was going to say the fourth episode did not redeem us because nothing happened. They were walking in the forest of the whole damn episode until the Dark Lord came from behind at the end. And then all of a sudden roll credits. It was a 27 minute episode. What the hell, man? I can get that on network TV. Right. And. And, you know, they were walking, and then this particular dark force shoes or whatever is so powerful that he pushed all those Jedi back with one force push. But the Jedis don't know nothing about the dark side coming. Really? Yeah. I'm... And since when are the Jedi so secret, secretive that they don't go to the High Council? Yeah, I don't like that. I do not like that at all. I mean... And I did not like the fact that Jedi Master Cal Mundi was in this series. He shouldn't... He, there was his species, a lot of backlash. There's theories about, about his, his species, how old he would have been. Because this is a hundred years before Phantom Menace. You and he didn't look to, uh, bring that, that young. Here's the thing. Not only are you the f not the first to bring it up, it's been brought up countless times. What does Disney do about it? They go on Wikipedia, 
which is the Star Wars encyclopedia, and they changed his birth date on there. I couldn't believe that. Instead of, you know, saying, hey, we were wrong, we messed up, they doubled down on their mistake and say, okay, we're going to change that. So now he's older. So they, yeah. so who, who's older? Uh, Kaya Kai Mundi. Like overall, so like they, they changed, they changed his, his date of birth further back yes. to go back. Yeah. So now all of a sudden his species can live over a hundred years. Apparently so. Cause that wasn't the case. No, it wasn't, but now it is because Kathleen Kennedy's running the show. Well, I think I, as as a diehard Star Wars fan, you know, mm -hmm. and I want to, I want to like what the content that they're putting out. I want to like it. I do. Mm -hmm. They they need to come out in front and say, from this point going forward, anything that happened in the legend side of it didn't really happen in real life. They were stories or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, but if it's, you know, if it, if they're not doing that, you can't just cut off a, a timeline and add it to to it. I, it. It just doesn't work for me. No, it doesn't. Um, I don't I don't know what they can do to redeem this show for me. I mean, I'm going to watch it because, you know, we made that, that a, we made a promise. That leads me to my next to, question. Uh, what are you looking forward to to happen in this fifth nothing, episode? Nothing. I'm not looking forward to anything. I'm I'm just going to watch it like I have to watch the Raiders play Monday Night Football. I mean, it's just going to be on TV, and I'm going to watch it. Oh, uh, you just stick it in. I'm not going to have it, a dog in the fight. Stick it in and turn it. Okay. Um, I'm looking for some lightsaber combat. This is, after all, Star Wars. You, well, you there's got... only one bad Jedi left, supposedly, you know, and that's the Asian dude. You know, there's only one guy left for them to kill. Yeah. Uh, that... that were the original four. Now, real quick, there's some theories on who this Dark Lord is. I've heard, and this was my theory also, that it was uh, May's friend. The guy that she's traveling with. He's yeah, really the so. Dark Lord. I'm, I'm sticking to that for a little while. But I've also heard it was another survivor from the witch cult. That turned into a Sith? Well, the the um, theory is it's her mother, the, um, the black one, because she had two mothers. Because right before she gave her sister the power, the uh, string or whatever they call it, the thread, she gathered the power and then they got interrupted. So she has all this power now. I don't know. I'm just reading the theory uh, that I had read earlier. Who has all the power? The, the mother, the mother witch, the, uh, the one that was in charge. Right, but she never, I mean, but she never lost the power, except she's, you know, quote-unquote dead. But did she die? Well, I don't know. That person that, that's in that little costume was awful skinny compared to the lady that was, the you know, the, the head witch. Which is what goes back to my uh, theory on the, uh, the little guy that she's traveling with. I don't think, I don't think it's him. I, I really don't. He's just showing a little too much Clark Kent in him. He seems like he's accident prone. And I will tell you, if it is him, mm -hmm. I will be officially done with the Alkalite. Because, really? yeah, that's just, that is a dumb storyline. It really is a dumb storyline. Well, the reason why I, I'm leaning more towards him. He didn't go gather anything in the woods. He went and he actually killed the Wookiee. And then came back. Because that Dark Lord got to the Wookiee. Oh, yeah. Which, if you know, it is, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's, I'm, it's, I'm going to be done with it. Now, uh, another thing I, I, I don't will like, be done with it. This Wookiee is not just any Wookiee, he's a Jedi. He didn't sense something in his home, he gets slashed while he's sitting in his chair. No fight put up? What the hell, man? 
that's why I said the Sith is so good that you that that he has a cloud around all of the Jedi all across the universe. Where the hell's Yoda? Right. Yoda sent Yoda sent Sidious the whole time, but he just couldn't pinpoint it. Exactly. He knew there was a problem. He just couldn't pinpoint it. Nobody sees any problem. I really need the council to get involved. In They're the not going episode. to. I've already read that. I've already read that. The you're not going to see. We're not going to see Yoda. We're not going to see none of them cats. Mm. See, I'm I'm not liking that. I am not liking that. They will. Have and to for show this Sith, for this Sith to be that powerful, we should already know who he is via history of how powerful Siths were. It's not Darth. It's not Darth Raven. <laughs> it's not Darth Bane. You know, it's not Darth Malgus. You know, it's not Darth Plagueis. Which that's a theory who it is, but I highly doubt it. Yeah, um, at, sure. at least if it were if it was Plagueis, it would almost make sense because he's who taught is who taught Palpatine. Yeah. But if it comes out to be that dude that ran that bar, I'm gonna be. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be like, I'm a, I'm gonna rank him with DC. With the DC universe, it's that stupid. Ooh. Well, um, yeah, I I agree with you. They really, really got to show me something. I got to see some wow factor in episode five. I mean, advance the story because after this, you're only gonna have three episodes left. Advance the story. That's one. Show me some action. That's two. Because last episode was boring as hell until the very end before they rolled the credits. Uh, and three, um, let's start to unravel some of this mystery. I mean, you don't have yeah, to we give should it all up right now. But let us I, I'm something. thinking we should see a lot of the Dark Force user mm -hmm. in this one. I mean, should we should know something about him by the end of the 20-minute episode. <laughs> yeah. And that goofy mask, I don't know who designed that mask. I don't like the way the rivets or whatever it is makes a little smile. What do they call it? Yeah, they've been calling him Darth Smiley or some yes. shit like that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, there's a lot that needs to be redeemed. A lot that can be redeemed. But like you said, it looks like there's a lot that may not be redeemed. Yeah. I mean, they, they could have done... They're not giving the Star Wars audience what they want. No, they are not. But they know that we're all suckers and we will still come to watch. Ain't that the truth? All right, gang, we are going to wrap it up here. I uh, just want to let you guys know one more time, get in contact with us, like, share, subscribe. I really appreciate you. Our subscriber count is going up. I like that. So appreciate you guys. Uh, this little channel that could is actually doing things. Thank you so much. Big show. Yes, very much. Thank you. Take us on. Uh, out of here. I just reiterate it like I always do. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell at the top. So you, you know uh, when we post some stuff. And uh, yeah. Make. Uh, give somebody that you, you love. Tell them you love them. Give them hugs and kisses. Absolutely. Tomorrow's not promised. Good Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Good night, everybody.